Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video series, I'm going to break down exactly how I created this dashboard, this interactive dashboard for the Excel Hash competition. Now, if you haven't seen my video on the Excel Hash competition, I'll put a link in the description below this video, and you can check that out as well. But basically, this was a competition where we were given four ingredients or four Excel features that we had to use to create a solution in Excel. And for my submission, I created uh, this file here which is an interactive dashboard or attendance report I also did this on a bit of a parody on my favorite TV show which is the office and in this uh, we have this story where Dwight is tasked by Michael to create a report and improve their quarterly reports and so Dwight of course has installed a security system in the building and is tracking attendance uh, through that so we're given some data and the data looks like this here and this is all the data we have so we have to create some uh, formulas around this we're using the XOR function and I'm going to explain that in this video uh, in the next video we'll look at the XLOOKUP function the new XLOOKUP function as well and how to calculate the duration then in the future videos we'll look at some of the new dynamic array functions we have the unique and filter functions the sort by function so we'll look at a few different functions there and how those work We'll also take a look at the shapes and the conditionally formatted icons and how to create those. And then finally bring it all together on the dashboard here. So we have this interactive dashboard. You can select the department from this dropdown. That'll change which employees are displayed in the list. And you can see here it also changes the average and shows the performance and changes the uh, formatting of the icons here to display whether we have a good uh, or bad performance, uh, bad being the storm cloud and good being fireworks. So that's an overview of this file. And again, in this video series, we're gonna dive into how to uh, create it step by step. And in this first video, we're going to look at the XOR function. All right, so we're first going to look at how to use the XOR function to determine if an employee comes into or goes out of the building. So here we have our original data set. And again, Dwight's data does not tell us this. It just gives us a timestamp of when the employee either entered the building or left the building. So we need to figure out if they came into the building or went out of the building so we can then calculate the duration, the amount of time that they were in the office. So I have a uh, formula here in this column C that uses the XOR function. So this is our final result here. And we're going to look at how this uh, formula works and uh, go ahead and rewrite it. So we'll do that here in column D. Again, we're going to use the XOR function. So just type equals XOR and we can see XOR returns a logical exclusive OR of all arguments. So the X in XOR stands for ex an exclusive OR and I'll explain what this means. So we'll tab into it. With XOR, we can uh, feed it multiple logical statements. And kind of the rule here is that if those statements uh, return a true, an odd number of trues, then XOR is going to return a true. If they return an even number of trues, then XOR returns a false. So it's kind of a weird formula uh, or function, uh, but that's how it works. And I'll show how we can also use a COUNTIF function for this, COUNTIF with is odd. Uh, in, in place of this XOR, in case you don't remember how to use XOR, but I will explain it. It's kind of a cool function. Now we can do that with multiple logical statements. We can also just feed it an array of logical statements, an array of true false values. And that's what we're doing in this particular example. So what we're doing is uh, creating a running total reference and then comparing the uh, value, the employee name in the current row to that uh, range above it. So I'll do this first with just regular references. I did uh, in this example use uh, an Excel table and structured reference notation, but we'll just first look at regular range references. So this here is going to be cell A2. We're just gonna reference cell A2 first. We're gonna say that's equal to, and then we wanna create a running range, a running range above uh, for this cell and anything above it. So for the first cell, in the first row, I should say, we're just gonna make that A2 to uh, A2, just like that. We also want to uh, make this row, re row reference an absolute reference uh, for that first part of the reference there. And I'll explain that as we go. But we'll just go ahead and create that reference for now. So A2, this value here, we're just gonna compare that to this range above, including this cell. 
I'll hit enter there. That'll expand our table and copy the formula down. And now we'll see a list of true and false values. And what's happening here, you can see in this cell, we have A2 to A3. So that's that running total range that I'm referring to. If we look down here, A2, because we have that anchored to A4. So that's what we have up here. And we're just comparing the name in this cell to all the names above. And it's returning an array of true false values. And you can actually see that. So let's go down here to the first false value. We'll go up to the formulas tab and then uh, the evaluate formula button right here. Keyboard shortcut is Alt T U F. That'll open the evaluate formula window and we can actually step through and evaluate the formula and see how this works. So here's A16. This underlying letter is what we're evaluating first. Click the evaluate button or the space bar. And so that's what we're evaluating that cell there, which again is cell A16. Uh, against all of the cells in that range above it. So that's going to give us an array of true and false values. And in this case here, we have two true values, one right here and one right here. So with X or uh, it's going to return a false because we have an even number of true values. That's how X or works. So that's what's happening here. So it's just seeing it's counting the number of true false values. It sees an even number, hit evaluate again. That's going to return a false. So I'm going to close that. That's just a way to step through the formula and see how it's calculating. Another thing I should note here is that the uh, date, the dates or the date and times need to be in chronological order. So you can see I have this table uh, here in uh, ascending order from oldest to newest or descending order from uh, oldest to newest there. So that's the order that this will need to be in for this to work. Uh, but that's just going to be a criteria here that we'll have to deal with. So the, the, da the data needs to be sorted first, just one criteria there. So now we have this list of true and false values. And all I did in our original formula was then wrap that in an if statement here, an if function. So here we can just do that again here, just type if. There we go. And then this will be our logical test. It's going to return a true or a false. And again, if it returns a true, we want to say uh, that they came into the building. Let's wrap that in quotes there. If it returns a false, they went out of the building. So that's all we did there uh, to just give those uh, an ID or an identity there, the true false values. So in or out just makes it easier to read. So another thing you'll notice in my original formula here, uh, instead of that running total reference, we have this reference here using the index function. And this is a way with Excel tables and structured references to create that same running total uh, range reference. And the reason we do this is just it's a quirk with tables. Uh, if you use the reference like this here uh, with this type of reference, which is regular cell references and ranges, uh, when you add new data to the bottom of the table, it might not always extend this range for you automatically. So instead, we need to use structured references. And that's what we're using here. Uh, with this index function. So I'll just quickly explain this one as well. What this is doing is it's referencing the employee column, the entire column here, and just returning the row one. So it's just creating a reference to the first row in that column, uh, again, using the index function, and then uh, going and uh, creating that range reference to the current row. So again, that's what's going to be on the uh, bottom of that range would be the current row. So when it's highlighted over here, it looks like the whole column's highlighted, but we're actually only evaluating those cells above it. Again, if we go down here, uh, still the entire column's highlighted, so it kind of looks a little bit confusing because we're really only evaluating against the first row in the table to the current row. Again, that's what this is here. First, the index function uses the first row in the table or returns a reference to the first row. I'm sorry, first row in the column first row in the employee column to the current row. The at symbol uh, gives us this row or the current row that we're in, the uh, formula is in. So that's that running total range reference there for structured references. Definitely a confusing one if this is the first time you're seeing it, but does work well when you're adding new data to the bottom, which of course we would do here with this data set because anytime an employee comes in or goes out of the building or we get new data every week or whatever it is, we're gonna put it at the bottom of this table. So this will help extend that range reference. And then again, that's still wrapped in that, oops, I'm sorry there, that's still wrapped in the X or function uh, to do that evaluation on that array of true and false values against the uh, current row in the employee column. 
And then again, we have our if statement there, or if, I'm sorry, if function wrapped around that uh, to return an in or out value, depending on if XOR returns a true or a false. And as I mentioned earlier, we can also use the count if function to do this. So if you don't want to use XOR, and maybe you're sharing this file with others and they're not going to understand what XOR is, uh, you can also create this logic with count if. So let's take a look at how to do that. So we'll type uh, count if here and then tab into that. And we're going to need the range. Now, again, this is going to be that running total range. So for this example, I'll just show how to use regular references. But of course, you can also use the index function there uh, to create that running total with uh, structured references. So our range, again, we'll say A2 to A2 for st the start here. And we want to uh, make the absolute reference for the first row there and that first reference. And then our criteria is just going to be this cell here in this current row. So that's going to say at employee. You can also change because I and that's because I have the uh, table formulas turned on. You can turn those off. I have a, a video that explains how to do that. Or you could just change this uh, to A2 as well. Then we'll close the parentheses. And then, uh, of course, go ahead and hit enter. And that's going to just give us a column of numbers. And as you can see here, it's just counting whether how many times we've seen the employee name in this current row, that employee name in the range above. So here, when we get down here, we can see we have a count if of two because uh, Jim Halpert is found two times in this row and then one time above right here. And if you continue to scroll down, you'll just see these numbers uh, continue to increment up. Now what you can do here is just use the is odd function. So we're just going to wrap count if in the is odd function. And that of course returns a true if the number is odd and a false if the number is even. So somewhat similar to XOR there for this example. So we'll just uh, tab into that or open the parentheses, then close the parentheses there, hit enter. And now we're going to get our list of true and false values. And then again, you can wrap the if function around that to return an in or out instead of true and false. But is odd with count if is another way to go about this in place of XOR. So again, maybe just a little bit easier to understand. All right, so now that we know that the employee either came into or went out of the building, in the next video, we'll look at how to calculate the duration, the amount of time that they were in the office. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.